Final <laughs> prediction? Yeah. All right, I'm here with Peter Sullivan, um, a expert in analytics, and for 15 years or so, I believe you said you were in corporate turnaround and um, profitability, profitability improvement. Um, we were talking a little bit about COVID-19. How did I do? Was that, is that an accurate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's O Sullivan, but everybody misses oh, the O. Oh, and, right. I, and I love the O because I'm an O Sullivan, not a Sullivan. Uh, <laughs> okay. You still have the Sullivans in the, in the clan. There's like the Hatfields there. and McCoys, right? So, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, you, had, you were talking a little bit about, um, you know, what's going on and your thoughts on the direction we're headed. I was wondering maybe if you could just jump back into it here. Yeah, so, um, I mean... You know, like everybody, I, I talk to folks and it, we're, we're very anxious. We as human beings, we get incredibly anxious when we don't know what the next, what's going to happen. I mean, uh, you know, I, I named my company High Beam Analytics. High Beam is looking out into the future. The more you can see out in front of you, the more control you have over your destination. Uh, uh, and so I spend a lot of energy uh, because I know it works uh, uh, helping people anticipate the future and, and really doing predictive analytics. Um, and what I was saying is, you know, I, I spent 15 years with my own consulting firm, which is called the 180 Group. Um, and the whole issue was that I would use analytics to see what my clients couldn't see and that therefore I could help them find their way through, um, you know, a distressful situation, right? So. Um, we're in that same circumstance where there's so much anxiety and so much of it is because we see the numbers going up and we see the, you know, the, the press is really upset and giving us really negative information and we feel like we're out of control. So my inclination is to say, how do I get my arms around? And we do this with, with our clients, right? How do I get our arms around the core elements that are going to predict the future? What, what is it that we can start to look at that will help to pave a path of where we're headed. And one of the, one of the pushbacks we get is, and actually I saw a post on LinkedIn recently, which is, yeah, you can't do any planning because things are so chaotic, which is, it's count, maybe counterintuitive, but it's actually the, the other way around. Planning right now is more important than ever. And the analogy is, if you're driving down a straight freeway, high beams, they're, they're helpful, but you, you know you're gonna go straight and fast. If you're driving home down a, a windy road, your high beams are really important. Now you have to change direction all the time, but that's the whole point is you have to plan, you have to look at what the gap is between what you plan and what is actually showing up and you have to make nimble um, reactions. And that is literally the period we are right now. Mm. You've got to do the planning and then you've got to be able to make the adjustments. So when I think about COVID, I'm thinking, so what are the root elements that are really driving the unknown? And the first part is we don't know who is ill and who is not. That's, that's the big question. We don't know how many people, we know more people are ill than, than are showing up so far. And what is, the, what is the issue around that? Well, the first thing is testing. So the only way we can know is if we test everybody in the country and then we would know who's ill and who not, who is not. And if we could you know, have a magic wand, even beyond a, uh, a vaccine, we would want testing. If I was in charge, I would say, I want testing. So we already know that Quest and LabCorp are building testing and, and big corporations, they're gonna have tons of throughput, but they have to get all the resources and they have to get all the pieces in place to be able to distribute those tests. So you can kind of figure out, okay, so if they're on it, how long will it take before they'll be able to test the entire country, for example? If you just take that, take these big assumptions to, to, to kind of drive you to a, a logical conclusion. Mm. And so I said four to eight weeks, there's a, there's a timeline. And we could argue over what it is, and it doesn't really matter. What matters is pick something that's reasonable, pick an assumption that's reasonable that gives you a look forward. Now, if you say, let's pick six weeks, just let's split the baby, and then we'll keep track of that. We'll keep watching to see if that, that comes true or if it gets pushed out or gets pulled in. Now we have a plan. Then the second part is when we find out people are ill, what do you have to do? You have to isolate them, and then you have to make sure the people that are sit healthy stay healthy. And what's the easiest way to do that? Don't shake hands and wear mm -hmm. a mask. Mm -hmm. So when we have masks distributed in the same volume and masks are going to be fashionable, 
<laughs> in the next right, right six right. Or eight weeks. Then we will we will be t getting tested. So if you get the testing, then they'll set set up the tents, and we'll have long lines. I predict long lines in cars waiting to get tested because everybody will want to get tested, and that's a, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So let's, let's get it so everybody can get tested. So look at that as a timeline. So as soon as we get the testing, and as soon as we get the masks, and the masks will probably come before the testing, because I think the testing is more complicated to distribute. Masks will come before the testing. When we have those two elements, we can start opening up the economy. And once we do that, there's going to be a ton of, of pent-up demand. Hmm. So the companies that are looking at some sort of a timeline like that, and are ready for the when the doors start to open up, those are the ones that are going to get ahead and benefit and be able to help other people and be able to hire other people. So and your the trick is your one last you know, go ahead. So if you can manage yourself from a cash flow standpoint through that four, eight, 16 week, whatever that time period is, you know these steps are likely to happen. Right. You're the one that's going to do well. And my whole mission right now is to help companies get through that period with whatever, with your resources, with accounting resources. That's why John and I were going back and forth. Um, sure. You know, we're, we're talking about how can we help clients? How can we help companies, big and small? We don't really care. Who can we help manage through that time frame if we think that's a reasonable expectation and then just plan to that? Sorry. So, what was your what was your question? No, yeah, I was going to say. I mean, it sounds like the time. Uh, I was thinking that you were th saying it was the time in between that was a time to, you know, reevaluate or plan. But it sounds like you're all for taking action right now and oh. doing something to stay in business. That seems to be the continued theme: is pivoting right now, keep the lights on, do what you can do, find a way to stay relevant today, and then be prepared for whenever this pause is over. Uh, and what, how, how do you get prepared? For sure. For sure. So every company is going to be a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, there's no one size fit all, but the first of all is you got to preserve cash and right. to get on the tail end of it, you have to, so I do, we do a lot of work on in inventory, right? And if you're an, if you're a product company with inventory, if you don't have product, you can't make money. If you have too much product, you run out of cash. So there's a, it's just such a pivotal element and again, I didn't, I, I, this has been through experience and seeing different companies. If you can manage your inventory, if you're a product company, manage your inventory really well, you're going to, you're going to do well. So you have to have two things. You have to have inventory and you have to have people. Mm -hmm. you, you can't run your business without people. So you don't want to let them go. And we have a whole bunch of new money coming out of the government that's going to be distributed. So we are knee deep in all of the money that's getting distributed to try and find out how can we accelerate the whole process of getting people money so they can retain their employees. There's one program, I know there's a whole bunch of them, not to get in, in the weeds, but there's one program that says, look, we'll loan you the money, which sounds kind of scary when you don't have cash flow. We'll loan you the money if you keep your employees and at the end of the program, if you still have your employees, we'll turn it into a grant so you don't owe the money. Well, we're Fantastic. in the, to, to, to apply for that, you have to, uh, you know, you have to provide financials and you have to provide uh, a cash flow forecast. You have to provide, well, you know, that's pretty onerous. Right. Well, High Beam's in the business of, we, we already have all that data. So through this weekend, we're working at pre-organizing all of that data, including cash flow and, uh, and all the forecasting. So you can go click, click, click and hand it right back over to the bank within 24 hours. That's our goal. We're not there yet, but that's, that's what our team is working on is how can we help companies flick a switch, get qualified, apply, go right back to the banks. And I have relationships with banks and CPAs and how can we just streamline this process for our community so that they can retain their employees, they can hold steady. And when the doors open back up, when we see the testing, cause we're going to keep an eye on testing. When we can see the masks, if you got testing and masks, there's, Th then you're okay. Then you can start to open the doors up. Sure. And, and you know, you and I can go have a cup of coffee if you're, we're both wearing right. masks and we claim that we've been tested. Now, um, are you uh, doing some sort of education process for people to, to, about the grants or, I mean, about the loans specifically to what you're providing so they might be able to understand it as well? Yeah. So we'll, we will be putting some stuff out there, but we're probably not the best hub for that information. So we're going to disseminate a lot of that and partner with 
CPA firms, banks, you know, we're a San Diego company, but we're nationwide because we're an online company, right? Yeah, sure. Dealing with e-retailer, retailers and e-retailers, mostly retailers. And they're all online and, you know, they can be anywhere. Right. So most of it is for me, I think the best way to distribute this kind of uh, process is to go through the, the banks are the ones that really have the relationships with the customers. Mm-hmm. And so if we can provide that service back to the banks, and it actually is... A, a few bank CEOs that reached out to us and said, can you help us with these? Because I can see the, 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 the it's just too onerous to try and get your CPA or your accountant, especially if you're, you know, you got a part-time, these small businesses, we don't have full-time people that know how to do forecasting and right. fill out all these forms. Is there a way for us to kind of accelerate that process? That's where the idea came from. Which yeah, is, Well, that's a great pivot for your own business as well. You know, something you've got to do to stay relevant for people, what they need, provide it to them quickly. In a, yeah, in an easy way. You know? Yeah, I'm, I, and I'm. It, it's it's for us. It's a bit of a refinement rather than a pivot. It's really just kind of repurposing the data we've already got. Yeah, pack, you're packaging you know, it. In a, repackaging, repackaging it for yeah. a very very narrow purpose for sure. sure. Um, but but you know we kind of looked at our analytics and said we've already got the data. We just have to reformat it. So let's. So I'm literally. I got to go through the forms and see what. There's, you know, what are your assets, all that stuff. We're already pulling all that data straight out of the GL. And so we have it. We just have to organize it for them. Um, and that, that's probably a good exercise for us. You know, it makes all of us kind of work out right now because you got to really look at what your assets and what your capabilities are and right. leverage those. And so we may end up with a product that helps people get loans you know our clients would be able to get loans easier which is not a bad thing that's not what i would have focused on but gee if that's what the market needs right now let's let's make it happen and that's what our clients should be doing they should be looking at what do i need to do to serve the market in any way throw away profitability to a degree focus on cash flow yeah we're flipping around like profitability isn't net income you, you know that is not what's key right now and that will become key again but right now your priority has to be where's my cash and am i leveraging my cash and preserving it and i'm using it correctly yeah it sounds like you're doing all that too for your own business as well so you're taking taking the medicine as it were i mean i'm sure you're not going to be uh this won't be the most profitable project uh in the history of the world but you'll get a lot of new clients help a lot of people and your brand lift will be unbelievable lost leader for sure i don't we don't we don't care about that we we honestly don't because this is just not the time do we have the so we have the resources in part because we're owners and we have, I'm in my home office. I have been living in my home office for years. So I, I, I got to pay my rent, <laughs> right. like everybody yeah. else, my mortgage, whatever that is. But you know, we're, I, I drink my own bathwater. I keep my overhead really low yep. and sure out of the back end, companies that are smart, that think this through, if they do well, kudos on them. If they do well right now, because they're being too uh, profiteering, screw them. Right, right. <laughs> right? I, I want nothing to do with some company that's cranking up their prices and re- I want nothing to do with them. I want the hardworking, honest, there are so many of us that are out there just trying to do the right thing by our clients, by our employees. Those are the guys and gals that, that, that we want to associate with and help out. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's going to ring true. You know, it's, I feel like the way people behave in this time is not going to be forgotten. So uh, that's good. Yeah. And, 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 you know, like I do, maybe it will be to, for, to some degree, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, what, what kind of an organization, what, who are you showing up as, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that's really what counts, whether other people remember it or not. It, you know, it will create goodwill and that's yeah. awesome, but that's yeah. the way the world should work. So. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's an interesting time. It's definitely, uh, I think everybody's energy has gone up a level. That's Mm -hmm. what I've seen intensity, Mm -hmm. like, like this conversation, it's no joke. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Don't give me a bunch of fluff. Don't give me a bunch of, it's, what are you doing? How are you reacting and where do you see, uh, either risk or, or opportunity? And, and I see those companies at risk are the ones that are not looking at a lot of this, this enormous amount of money coming out of our government and not using that to retain their employees. I, I just, I, 
I, it just makes me ill to see this deficit go crazy. So I, I'm definitely, cons I can be very conservative, have very conservative views on that, but I would rather us spend our money on retaining employees and being able to get back to work than on unemployment and uh, emergency room healthcare. This is just a horribly inefficient way of using our funds as a government. This is a, this is a much better way to do it. That's my two cents anyway. I hear you. I'm, I'm happy about uh, that. The fact that something's happening, um, you know, it's nice to see that the government's there for us in some way or another. Um, you know, I'm glad you were on the call. This is like really helpful for a lot of people. If you're out there and you're curious about what to do for your finances and preparing for the comeback, um, right. You know, how to pivot now and be prepared for the growth that comes in the future. Uh, Peter's a great guy. He's obviously got a, a package he's built just for this. So I would encourage you to reach out to him. How, how can people find you? Well, so we're at highbeamanalytics.com. Uh, uh, we're also working with um, Save Us Systems, Save Us Solutions, sorry. Um, and that's, that's uh, John Petraglia, who I yeah. talked to a few days ago, uh, if you saw that. John and I are on Slack, and we are going back and forth sharing documents and data. And so he can kind of, I look at my business as, I've kind of said this before, to a lot of companies, uh, if there's a if there's an army in front of me uh, doing the war, which would be the sales guys and the CFOs, we're the supply chain in the back. We make sure that everything fulfills. So we're the ones that make sure that you've got enough inventory and you don't have too much inventory and you've got enough uh, cash and you know you can support the efforts that you're doing at the tip of the sword. Um, John's one of those guys that has a tremendous amount of integrity and capability and knowledge. And so he's a really good, and their whole organization is a good uh, company to partner up with because we need help just like everybody else. We can't do it all by ourselves. So this is really about a team attitude. How do we Absolutely. all with different skill sets? And then um, uh, Think Group is helping us a little bit with some of the understanding some of the tax implications. And so we're, we're really looking at partnering with lots of different organizations. Whoever can help in the different pieces um, Dan Yates at Endeavor Bank has given me a whole bunch of documentation in terms of what they need for their clients. That's where some of the banking has come from. So Dan has been really terrific about helping me set up my program so I can help him with his clients. And that's really that attitude I, I just love to see all of us leveraging our best skill sets and our strengths with everybody else uh, without any jealousy, just looking at how can we how can we help the community right now? Because there's just a lot of moving parts and it's hard to keep your arms around all of it. A hundred percent. Yep. I, I agree with you completely. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, reach out to Peter. I'll link him out on uh, LinkedIn too. You can click right through, find him. Yeah. Right on. But um, good luck to you. Stay healthy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice chat. <laughs> yeah.